Uh, let me ask you the question. Can you tell me your name and where you're from? Sure, I'm Rob Hine. I'm the Head of Commercial Engagement at BSI, the British Dance Institution. Brilliant. So you've come along today to the first meeting of the BIM for Fit Out group. What did you get out of today? Uh, I thought it was um, it was tremendous to see people from all different industry sectors and, and different uh, levels coming together to discuss the issues of BIM. Um, I think it's very clear that it, it's, um, it's a uh, project that's still very much in its infancy uh, and that there's a lot of sharing of information that needs to be done at this stage before we can start to properly implement BIM in construction product projects. Did you hear what you expected to hear from people today? I was slightly surprised at how little still people understand BIM and the, and the problems that it throws up. Um, but basically, I think I think the things that I heard were more or less what I was expecting to hear. That there's a lot more discussion that needs to be carried out at this stage before we can start using BIM in earnest. So, where do you think the barriers are to to BIM? It's it's again all about collab collaboration and education. Uh, personally, I believe that we need to spend a lot more time collaborating with clients to educate them on, on what BIM is so that we don't just get people saying, I need this project developed uh, and delivered in BIM without really understanding what that means and the implications of that and the value of what they're asking for. And then pushing that message all the way down from the tier one con contractors through the supply chain, through architects um, and, and uh, anyone that's involved in, in that project so that they understand their role and how BIM can add value to that role and make them more efficient. So we've got a stack of work to do over the, the next year. We're already starting to do work with BSI, which is which is great. Uh, can we rely on some, some help from BSI to deliver this over the next year or so? Absolutely. Yeah, anything that we can do to help, uh, particularly with the education piece, because we, uh, we have developed in collaboration with industry some very good certification pro products. For example, using the Kite Mark uh, to demonstrate that organisations can help to deliver a project in, in accordance with the requirements of the, the suite of standards and then measuring that output. But we still have a lot to do within BSI to help educate everybody in the industry and outside of the industry. That's brilliant. Well, we look forward to working with BSI next year and thanks for coming along today. Thank you, Joe. It's an absolute pleasure. I've got one additional uh, question, actually, is in your role as head of, head of commercial, and that is the, the, the and it's not particularly related to BIM, but we, we want to shift the emphasis very firmly uh, onto the technical competence or the technical space, something we want to own okay. for the interior systems thing. And, and we chair uh, a couple of groups on that for BSI. And we see you very much as the lead in this area. And when, one of the things we were trying to do is get that cultural change around British standard in, in at the moment. It's pretty much a weapon that's used against them when they fail to comply with a standard they frequently Absolutely. don't know exists. So we we're very keen to change that to it becoming their friend to say actually, in the bit we were talking about on BIM earlier, you've asked for this, I've delivered this, uh, crudely, please pay me or uh, please sign off this project because actually I've delivered what you asked for. Do you, is that something that challenges with the way British standards yeah, are going? Yeah, absolutely, it does, David. So we, we, uh, there's a couple of issues that are important to, to, to explore here. The first one is the BSI um, don't actually write the standards. What we do is we facilitate the writing of them for industry by industry. Standards are written really for three reasons. They're written to uh, increase quality and, uh, and as such reduce risk, to increase revenue, and to reduce cost. And if a standard uh, doesn't do those things, then it's not a very good standard. Yeah. So um, that, that's kind of the message that we need to get across. We're not using standards to, to set policing levels and to beat people up. They're written for the reason to add value and to, to uh, basically ensure that organizations are fit for purpose and that they uh, are uh, organizationally resilient and can withstand the test of time. Excellent. Well, we look forward to working with you on the, the various standards we're, we're involved in. Thank you very much, David.